Hi, I'm Jeff Hickman. I'm the executive producer of Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, this morning, um, when you introduced yourself to the, to the journalists, um, you said many things about how Star Wars The Old Republic is uh, developing. Sure. Um, so, especially since free to plays a lot of players uh, have come to the game. Can you tell us the exact numbers again? Um, I can tell you what I told you this morning, Oliver. Um, so, let me see if I can dredge them up out of my memory. So we've had, since we launched Free to Play in November, we've had over two million new players come to our game. We've had over four and a half million new characters created, and we have thousands of new players playing every single day mm -hmm. and growing. So um, what is the average playtime of, of, of one of those new players? Do you have numbers? Boy. You know what, I don't have that off the top of my head, actually. <laughs> it's, it, we've always had, I can tell you this, we've always had a really long average playtime. Um, people play our game a lot. Like they seem to, when they engage with our game, they get stuck in the story and really play, you know, for hours and hours on, on, on end. Um, and most of these guys are sticking around. Okay. Um, so, um, um, the, the, the pre-sales of, of uh, Rise of the Hot Cartel mm -hmm. have already started a couple of weeks ago. Uh, pre-sales of Rise of the Hot Cartel started back in, 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 De in December, actually. Yeah. Okay, are you happy with the numbers so far? Yeah, we're really happy. We've, we've um, hit our goal that we set back in December um, for pre-sales of Rise of the Hot Cartel. Oh, awesome. That's really good to hear. It's because good for us to hear, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, since the release, so you, the, the first uh, updates, there were mainly feature updates, so you turn out, uh, it turned out to be more content updates. So, And um, in last August on Gamescom, when we saw, you saw we want to release more rapid patches, mm -hmm. is everything already on the pace? You want it to be, or is there real, still room for uh, improvement? Yeah, I think I think there's always room for improvement, but I think we're in a really good pace right now. Since we talked to you last in at the Gamescom in August, we committed to an eight-week content update cadence, and we've hit it every eight weeks. Something new has come out. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, a little bit sooner, um, and we are committed to that for the foreseeable future. Um, we've got great plans. We plan about. We plan more than a year in advance, so we have great plans for this upcoming year. Updates every eight weeks, um, and some surprises, I think, that are going to delight the players. Can you tease us a oh, bit? Can I tease you? <laughs> um, I can tell you some interesting things that are coming. Um, we have a new customization option feature that's coming uh -huh. that will allow you to change your hairstyles, your faces, uh -huh. your species, um, including the introduction of the Cathar race. Um, that are coming as part of um, a cartel market update. It's actually not a part of a regular update. Um, and so we have some interesting things like that that are coming to the game fairly soon. So is Cathar, is um, everything one uh, thing, oh, the people think that it will come along with uh, update um, 2.0 uh, near the, the rise of the hot cartel. Is this true or? It's not currently a part of 2.0 or rise of the hot cartel. Okay. But close. You could say that. Okay. Um, the Cathar, they're a human race again, you know? Uh, they're humanoid. Humanoid. Sure, they're yeah, humanoid. No, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Right. Humanoid. Sorry. Right, right. Um, but many people wish that you would bring in uh, more alien races like the right. Kisser, for example. Is, something, right. is it on your list? Um, something we talk about all the time, absolutely. I don't know. Um, if, if and when we'll get around to that stuff, but it's not something that we've, we've said we're not going to do, and it's something we talk about all the time. Okay. Uh, why is it so hard to get those races into uh, the game as playable races? Yeah, there's lots of different reasons. Some of them are Star Wars canon reasons, like um, does it make sense to have a playable Wookiee? Um, Wookiees don't speak basic. Um, you know, it's this kind of stuff. And so you start to run into these odd problems that have to do with does it does it fit right in the universe? Some of it is um, a resource driven. Like some of these things are really hard to get in. Like a truly alien race, you know, um, something that's you know not two two arms, two legs kind of race where you have to completely do all redo all of the art in the game. 
very, very expensive to do. And mm -hmm. so there's those types of considerations also. And some of them just simply have to do with where does it fit within our plan. Like, we have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the plan has some very specific things in it that kind of all fit together throughout the year. And um, sometimes those things just don't fit within the plan properly. It don't make sense. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, talking about the, the story, um, so at the moment the Empire is um, retreating, mm -hmm. the, the Republic is advancing, the yep. Huts try to, to um, use this... Um, take advantage of it. Yes, take advantage of it. Um, and I heard that the Emperor is um, dead and at least missed. So is it true? Let's say he's missing. He's not dead. Well, we don't know. But he is missing. He might just be in hiding. Did I miss something in the story? So was this just told, or is it a new story element? No, so no, it's there in the story. Okay, you can already experience it mm -hmm. in a way. Okay, mm -hmm. then I missed totally something. I'm sorry <laughs> for that. So new powers are rising, and the huts, uh, they make themselves very vulnerable if they go and, and, and um, rise for power. So okay. it's a very... Um, unusual behavior for them. Yeah, they have to, um, that's why they've been so secretive. So if you look at McKeb, when you start the, when you start the expansion experience, you actually don't know what's going on. You just know there's huts there, and they're doing something. And so part of Rise of the Cartel is discovering what they're doing, why they're doing it, and I think you'll discover through the storyline, it'll explain to you why they think that it's worth the risk. Mm-hmm, okay. Do they really think that they could conquer the whole galaxy? Um, yes, they do. I, I heard the word... Uh, or at least be a power. Huh? At least be a power within the galaxy. Yeah. Not the only power. But yeah, maybe not the only power, but a power. Because I, when, I, when I played uh, <coughs> the press, I heard one of the huts saying, Hut Empire. <laughs> This is a very strong name. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They think um, McKeb presents a big opportunity for them. Especially with um, with uh, the power that Isotope Five promises. Are there um, are they, there are other voices within the Hut community? Because I don't think that all of them agree that they should uh, act like this. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely I don't know if you want to call them good guy and bad guy Huts, but uh, oh, oh yeah, there's there's Huts that are aligned with the Hut um, goals, and then there's Huts that are actually aligned with the Empire, and Huts that are aligned with the Republic also. Will the story of the Huts end with the rise of the Hut Cartel, or will it go on? Still, still has yet to be seen. Yes? I don't think it's going to end. Okay. But that's something not for this conversation. Okay. For the future. Because I'm really looking forward to what Nimra the Hut is going to do, because he's one of the good Huts so right. far. Right, exactly. Uh, why did you decide to, to have the Hut story, not the classic Empire mm -hmm. Republic style thing? Yeah, I think... Expansion. I think... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. No I think it um, it's an interesting thing to have somebody come in and shake it up a little bit. You know, if you look at the the first 50 levels of the game, it's Empire and Republic, and it's your story within the Empire and Republic. And having a third faction come in to um, to mix things up a little bit and, sh and make it different and exciting, I think is an important thing. And so we really looked at who, what are iconic, what are iconic uh, races in the universe. What are thing? What are uh, races that maybe people don't know that much about yet they know about them? And Huts presented a very interesting story opportunity for us, and the writers especially. You know, guys like Hallhood, who you guys, who you saw this morning, um, these guys are geniuses at writing this stuff, and they came up with this whole storyline through Rise of the Cartel and beyond that um, I personally think is great. It ties in very well to the galactic struggle between the Republic and the Empire, but doesn't necessarily. Um, It doesn't necessarily tell exactly the same story. I think it's new and interesting. Hmm. Um, head of the Hut Rise is uh, Toboro the Hut. Mm -hmm. That was his name. Yep, Toboro. Uh, he will play the major role in the operation, right? Yes. So it's the, the end boss as well? Um, I see the end boss. Um, he can, he's definitely near the end and something that you encounter uh, within Rise of the Hut Cartel. So I don't want to ruin it. The, the end bosses are unknown so far. Depends upon what you mean the end boss is. 
So if you look at the operation, he's not the end boss in the operation. Okay. But I'm not going to tell you who it is. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yeah. Especially when you think that the Emperor is missing at the moment. Very true. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Taboro, what is he for a character? So we have seen in him is like a warfare guy, he has uh, lost his arm. Yeah, he's he got a crazy a claw, claw in his hand. What is his story before Rise of the Hotel? I am the wrong guy to ask that question of, Oliver. Um, I know a little bit of his background, but he's, he's one of the ruling elite in the hut hierarchy, and he's basically filling the, the power vacuum that, was, um, that, that is kind of there right now. Um, but you know, Hall is the right guy to ask that question. Mm. Not me. Sure thing. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, let's see. I I always do some question marks at my notice, so and I try to get a, a good question. So okay. it. <laughs> um, you introduced some new character, new figures like um, uh, the shroud, mm -hmm. and I asked the question before, but. Um, wasn't very clear. So he has this hat thing like Lobo did in Empire Strikes Back. Did you notice that? Sure, we noticed. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So are they kind of related or is it just coincidence? Yeah, I think it's coincidental more than anything else. It, it, it's a communication device that serves okay. a specific purpose. Um, we thought it looks cool. Is it an item you can get in the game? Boy, you know what? I don't know. That's a great question. That I have no idea what great the answer feedback. is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see if I can if get you that not. answer. Yeah. Let's see if I can get you that I answer. I want to cut my hair, so bold hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have similar things. In fact, I know we have similar things in the game right now, but that exact item. I don't know. Okay. I'll find out for you. Uh, let's see. I think I most through my questions, but maybe if there's something you want to talk about. Wow. Um, I think the thing that's the most important for me about Rise of the Hub Cartel is the opportunity that it provides to show players who used to play our game mm -hmm. um, all the great things that we have become. Like we've went through so many changes in the last nine months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a as a studio, as a as a development team, um, as a business. You know, going free to play, and the game itself. All of the changes that we've went through. Um, I would love for people who used to play our game, you know, nine months ago plus, um, to come back and give it a shot again. With Rise of the Hut Cartel, we do so many things and we continue to improve on the game in so many ways. It's got everything that a player would want and expect from an MMO and, and more. Like, it's a great game. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the biggest thing that I think Rise of the Hut Cartel um, gives us the opportunity to do is send that message back out to those people who used to play. Mm -hmm. Come on back, give it a try. When you look into the forums, there are many people who say you know, Star Wars The Old Republic is not a good game and because they judge it from a point of view they had at the beginning of last year. That's right, that's so, exactly my point. So, do you feel as developers disappointed when you read those things? and? Yeah, I think so. Disappointed is probably a good way to say it because disappointed that they're judging us based on stuff that they saw last year. I wish they would come and take a look because I think that the things that a lot of them pick up, maybe not everything, but the things that a lot of them pick up, we've improved on, we've fixed, we've changed, whatever. There's so many things that we think of as great in this game and uh, give us give us an opportunity. I can tell you there are lots of people playing the game right now who disagree with that viewpoint of it's not a good game. 